This is why the Christian has to keep the word of God before them. And you have to keep other like-minded believers with you. You notice Jesus sent his disciples out two by two. Uh, the only person he ever sent out by himself was the maniac of Gadara. And he sent him to the tent, to the Decapolis and says, go show the people the wonderful things that God has done for thee. You see, it's easy for it to cross the line and become a personal vendetta. My, my goal is that it doesn't cross the line and become a personal vendetta without Christ. There is no way you can fight for the lives of the unborn and it not be personal. Because we really love those human beings. It's it's not it's not the it's not an issue that lends itself to a detachment. I have I have been threatened at the clinic. I've been I've had I've been spit on. I've been I've had a, a, a Black Lives Matter guy to come and get this close in my face. He was trying to provoke me. To, 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 to hit him. Um, I've had women bend over in front of me and do obscene things to throw us off course at, at, at the clinic. Uh, that, that's a young lady. Uh, I won't call her name. I almost did. She, 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 she works at the clinic. And uh, 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 this, this particular person happens to be Caucasian. And you can tell she's accustomed to black guys being around because she has absolutely no fear. She will work her way in the crowd, get in, squeeze in between us because we know if we dare bump her, she'll call the police and say she's being assaulted. Uh, and after she gets into the crowd, now she's standing where we're allowed to stand. She'll turn her phone on and says, I'm being surrounded by all of these people. Look at this. And, and we're shown, it looks as though we're surrounding her when she actually got in the middle of us. You cannot fight a battle like that and not, and it not be personal to you. You, you can't see a lady get off of the bed and not have the abortion and give you a thumbs up. Prettiest thing I've ever seen. I don't even want to talk about that because I don't want to get all teary eyed, but that thing, and then, and then, Brother Jeremiah, you can't be there and embrace and hug the mother and help her after she's had the abortion. She didn't listen. She heard us going in. We were saying everything we could to prevent it. But she also found out that the only loving arms that were waiting for her, because once that clinic gets the money, they don't care if she walked out bleeding like like a, a hog. They're done. Mm -hmm. The only loving arms that was waiting for her were ours. Because, you know, she's still for whom Christ died. Jesus still loves her just as much. And so that's the divide that you have to keep. And it takes prayer, studying the word, and constantly being reminded as to why we're doing this. We're fighting for babies. We're fighting for families. We're fighting for moms. We're fighting to, 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 to uh, keep the uh, literature that children shouldn't have away from them. But we can't, we can't become celebrities. We can't, be, we can't allow ourselves to become stars. This is not our claim to fame. Our claim to fame. This is the call of God. And, and, the, and the truth is, you may get killed doing it. I remember one day we called the police and the police came to the clinic. The people was accosting us. They, they hit one of our members with an umbrella and different things. So we called the police. The police drives up. I walk up to the officer to explain what's going on. The officer goes for the gun. And I'm like, whoa. And this was back when Willie Gray had just recently gotten killed in Baltimore. I said, Lord, am I getting ready to get shot down like Gray? And I said to her, I said, ma'am, 
ma'am, we're the ones who called you. But I'm a big, I'm a big black guy. Her assumption was I, I was the problem. And right there, I'm that close to getting gunned down in the street. Three white police officers, three males pulled up in another car. It was like God sent three angels. These guys, they got out of the car. They were professional. They checked out the situation. Situation. They brought calm. And I, and I said to them, I said, you need to talk to this officer right here. She almost shot me. And, and, uh, and see, and that doesn't fit the narrative. You know, when I tell the story, when I share this, depending upon the audience, everybody's thinking, Oh my God. Oh, it, it had to have been, uh, when he said the three white guys drove up or well, they, they had to come to, to, to do damage. No, they came and they restored order. So we see these things when we're on the battlefield. There is no way to have these things happen to you and it not be personal. Um, but we keep Christ uh, in the middle of it. And by the way, we tell our members at the church, when we go and we fight battles like this, those of you who are quick tempered, those of you who can't take being called the N word, who can't take being spit on, who can't take being pushed, Stay home. We want you to pray for us, but don't you show up because you're going to cost us our permit and you can't save the babies without the permit. <laughs>